Hey guys, let's talk a little bit about Coco Golf. Amazing tournament at the French Open. Uh, she's been getting unreal experience in the last three, four years. Um, I actually had the opportunity when she was like seven or eight years old, when they came from Atlanta, Georgia, I gave her uh, a couple private lessons. Uh, her dad's a great guy. The whole family's like amazing. Uh, dad was a high level basketball player. Her mom ran track. So the genetic uh, part of it was kind of baked in extra crispy. But even at a young age, one of the things I saw besides this Olympic foot speed, which she looks like a little track star playing tennis, I love her makeup speed, was she had this ability to concentrate. Um, you know, very unique. She could stay plugged in uh, for a long period of time, even at seven, eight. Even though they gave her a few lessons, that's what stood out about me. Uh, you don't know at that age where these kids are gonna become, but at the end of the day, you know, world-class athlete, especially in the running department, but mentally she was a little different because I could see that she was could focus for a long period of time. Now, all that being said, you know, I think she has an amazing future. Uh, she can play offense, she can play defense. When you have that type of foot speed, all right, and she's quicker than quick, faster than fast, Still, her movement has to get more efficient. She's a little quicker going from one side to the other, okay? Um, but at the end of the day, uh, just with that speed alone, even when you're nervous, you can win a lot of matches. But let's go down the road and let's just look at her game step by step. Let's take the backhand. First off, most of the time with young kids, especially with females, and I've been fortunate to put together some of the best backhands in the history of the game. Venus, Serena, Capriati, Pierce, Sharapova, Mesquina, uh, Kennan. I could go on and on. A lot of times people on the backhand, they biomechanically, they get this for free. Because there's two hands on the racket, okay? They just kind of stay connected. They stay connected, whether they do a bubble loop or they do the pull push motion, the, the bigger muscles run the show. It's like a hockey shot. So that's why you see, very prominent, okay, uh, on the tour, most people have better backhands. Even though the forehand's the knockout punch a lot of time, because you can run around and you have more disguise and deception. On the backhand, it's most players, they're more connected. Because at a young age, when you're little and you're not that big and you're not that strong, the two hands kind of keeps you together and that's why you see a lot of these backhands on the tour, you know, they can really drill it with confidence. And with Coco, okay, because she's connected, okay, from the ground up, all right, she can take the backhand up the line or cross court and she eats it for breakfast. I love her mindset. She really goes after the backhand. Her backhand down the line is money in the bank. It's only going to get better and better and better. Now, the forehand. This is where it's a little dicey. Biomechanically, there needs to be like some tweaking and surgery, but this is all uh, biomechanics, okay? She has long arms. She's a wiry athlete. She's very elastic. On one hand, when you have that type of player, okay, uh, you get a lot of freedom. You get a lot of relaxation, which is great. You don't want to be tight and stiff. But on the other hand, there could be a lot of movement that goes on. And then when you get nervous, okay, things have a tendency to disconnect. Instead of the kinetic chain, leg, hip, shoulder, arm, it can get disconnected. And a lot of times Coco uses her arm so much and she kind of has to jump up in the air and just kind of hit with a lot of top spin. So that's why the forehand uh, needs some tweaking, okay? It needs to be put together. There's a way to do this, not a wrong way, right way, there's a better way. I would change the elbow position, I change the take back. It's not just practicing more, it's not footwork, it's not just like hitting more of the same. That ain't gonna work, there's a little hole there, no one's perfect, but this can be corrected, but it all has to be based on science. Now, her style of play, okay? I like it when you, she gets someone off balance, she uses that athleticism. From A to B, she reminds me of BW, she reminds me of Venus. She's an Olympic sprinter in a straight line. When she gets you out of position, she darts into the net. I'd like to see her do that more and more. When you're out of position,
bang, she just runs in there and does a drop volley. She actually has pretty good feel. I love the fact that she plays doubles. I think that's her dad, that's just so smart. You play doubles, you get more competition, you feel like you're a part of the thing, you get low volleys, half volleys, you practice, 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 return a serve. The doubles has really helped her development. Besides her having unbelievable success, getting to the finals of the French, you know, and she's still a kid. So at the end of the day, I love the fact that she plays doubles. It's really helped her singles. But her style of play, to really get to the mountaintop, it's one thing to get in there. It's another thing to stay there, okay? I'd love to see her change her style a little bit. Her defense is always going to be world class. Her counter punching is always going to be world class, all right? So she can reset. What I would like to see her control the center of the court, stay near the baseline, cut the court, understand the geometry of the court a little bit more, use her speed offensively, eat second serves for breakfast, stand in closer. I think she should control the baseline a lot more and bring a whole different style. The good thing is she's so young, she's very coachable from what I heard. At the end of the day, okay, these are things that are really going to help her Big time, big time. Next thing, her competitive spirit. The kid's a battler, a warrior. Mentally, she has to be different. I tell everybody, it's what's under the hood. You can see from the outside, she's a world-class athlete with her movement, but it's what's under the hood. I tell everybody, tennis is a game of inches from one ear to another, all right? And this kid mentally is very strong. She has a lot of humility, I love that. Okay, she's not getting ahead of herself. Great family dynamic, there's balance in her life. So at the end of the day, this is like a big, big key. But she's mentally strong, all right? And this last tournament, she seemed pretty cool, calm, and collected. Remember, it's a game, it's all about the competition. Anybody, anytime, anywhere. It's hard to remember that, because a lot of times people have expectations and you can kind of lose your way a little bit. But she's a real deal, I love her game. Her future is unbelievably bright. Let's talk now a little bit about the serve, okay? Her serve, in my opinion, has the potential to be the best on the tour. Why? Because she has great springs from the ground up. Her, she has a very lively arm. She has an athletic body. But once again, biomechanically, it's a little incorrect. The leg drive doesn't initiate the racket speed. The second serve is incorrect at time. But at the end of the day, if you do millions of anything, it's going to get better. So the serve has to be tweaked like everybody. If you're, listen, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse, all right? But biomechanically, this has to be put together a little bit different. Or you're just going to have good days, bad days, and at the end of the day, it's the same thing. So the forehand and the serve, there needs to be, like, based on science, a different way to go about doing this. We can expedite the learning curve, might have to reverse engineer a few things, but those are two areas that are only going to get better if they want to really address it. But when it's all said and done, she's the real deal. I know some people said, ah, look at the draw she had at the French Open. Listen, she didn't pick who she's going to play. It's who's ever on the other side of the net. And the last time I looked, you still got to win the match. I don't care if you're playing number one, number 30, or number 20, all right? Amazing athlete, world-class player, world-class family. I'm just telling you right now, Coco Goff, the real deal. She's not going anywhere. And most of all, what I love, she's a great role model for every kid growing up.